Hello everybody, welcome back to Book of Kings, where we discuss topics such as history, religion, philosophy, psychology, culture, and more, and the way that they all interact with one another. Don't forget to like, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to receive a notification every time I release a new video. Hope you enjoy. The term Aryan is a highly controversial one, generally being associated with the racial theories of Nazi Germany. However, the history of the actual people known as the Aryans paints a very different story from the one many of you may expect. The concept of the Aryan race, which would come to be propagated by Nazi Germany, is one which is largely connected to the concept of language families in linguistics, namely the Indo-European language family. The Indo-European language family is a large grouping of languages comprising the vast majority of the languages of Europe, the languages of West and Central Asian countries such as Iran, Afghanistan, Armenia, and Tajikistan, and the languages of the northern Indian subcontinent as well as the Maldives and parts of Sri Lanka. The concept of this language family arose in the late 1700s when scholars such as British Orientalist William Jones noted the similarities between the languages of Europe, the Indian subcontinent, and Iran. Continuing on into the 1800s, linguistic scholars would deem that the similarities between these various languages were too strong to be merely coincidental, thus giving birth to the concept of the Indo-European language family with the term first being used by British scholar Thomas Young in 1813. Now the ancient Hindu texts, the Vedas, particularly the Rig Veda and the Avesta, the holy texts of the ancient Zoroastrian religion, the original religion of Iran, refer to a people known as the Arya or Aryans. This term Aryan would initially be applied by 19th century scholars to the languages of the northern Indian subcontinent and the languages of Greater Iran, which would become collectively known as the Indo-Iranian branch of the Indo-European language family. Now during our modern times, it is widely understood that the cultures of the Rig Veda and the Avesta, and therefore the ancient speakers of the Indo-Iranian languages, originated from nomadic peoples of the Eurasian steppe corresponding to the prehistoric cultures known today as the Sintashta and Andronovo cultures, based in Central Asia, and that these cultures were the original homeland of the Indo-Iranian or Aryan peoples. It is further generally understood that the Sintashta and Andronovo cultures were not the homeland of the original Proto-Indo-European speaking peoples from whom all Indo-European languages would derive, as the Sintashta and Andronovo cultures were among the various cultures which emerged following the migration of the original Indo-European speakers across Eurasia. The people of the Sintashta and Andronovo cultures would subsequently spread southward into the Indian subcontinent and the Iranian plateau, bringing with them their language, religious beliefs and practices, and the term Arya or Aryan. Their language would serve as the foundation for the languages of the northern Indian subcontinent and greater Iran, forming the Indo-Iranian branch of languages. Their religion would serve as the foundation for what would eventually evolve into Hinduism, and following the reforms of the prophet Zoroaster, break away to form the Zoroastrian religion. The term Arya, or Aryan, was used as an ethnic, cultural, linguistic, and or religious self-designator, as well as a designator for nobility by the authors of the Rig Veda and the Avesta in ancient India and Iran. Furthermore, it would serve as the basis for the ancient and modern names of the regions the peoples of these cultures would migrate to, such as the ancient name for northern India, Aryavarta, the name for the hypothetical homeland of the Iranian-speaking peoples described in the Avesta, Aryanam Veja, and the medieval name for the Persian Empire, Iran Shah, which would in turn serve as the basis for the modern name Iran. In time, however, based on the usage of the term Aryan in Hindu and Zoroastrian scriptures, and the misconception that Sanskrit was the oldest Indo-European language, Scholars such as philosopher and linguist Friedrich Schlegel would hypothesize that the original speakers of the Indo-European languages had referred to themselves as the Aryans as an ethnic identifier. Further, they would use the term Aryan as the name for the entire Indo-European language family and its native speakers. This position would later be abandoned, however, due to the lack of evidence that Aryan was used as an ethnic identifier by the Proto-Indo-Europeans with scholars such as modern philologist Martin West expressing doubt as to whether the Proto-Indo-Europeans had a sense of national identity, referring to them instead as a linguistic community. 
Now, while it is currently widely understood today that linguistics and even ethnicity don't necessarily correspond with genetics, as language and ethnic identification can be transmitted through cultural diffusion, theorists of the 19th century tied the concept of linguistics to genetics in order to develop racial categories based upon language groupings, with the concept of an Aryan race first being utilized in English by 19th century Orientalist Max Mueller. All native Indo-European speaking peoples would therefore be lumped together as a proposed Aryan race, a subgroup of the larger proposed Caucasian race, and became associated with a genetic racial category rather than the ethno-linguistic religious connotations which were attached to it by the ancient Indo-Iranian speaking peoples. Mueller would, however, express regret that these categories would come to be conveyed in quote-unquote racist terms, stating that the sciences of linguistics and genetics should be kept separate. Further, as present-day Indologist Michael Witzel notes, in the case of the Vedic Indians, Arya does not mean a particular people or even a particular racial group, but all those who had joined the tribes speaking Vedic Sanskrit and adhering to their cultural norms, such as ritual, poetry, etc. In fact, numerous names of Vedic tribes, chiefs, and poets mentioned in the Rig Veda were of non-Aryan origin, indicating either that Aryan families chose to give non-Aryan names to their children, and or that assimilation into the Aryan community was possible. Additionally, by the time period of the Buddha in the 5th century BC, Arya or Aryan came to acquire the meaning of noble, witnessed in terms such as Arya Desa, i.e. noble land, or Arya Basa, meaning noble language, and came to include the connotation of high social status or as an honorific title for the Hindu priestly class or for Buddhist monks. Additionally, in contrast to the primarily genetic connotations that the term had acquired in the modern age, the terms in ancient Iranian languages such as Avestan and Old Persian, Arya and Arya, were broadly encompassing terms which signified people of common ancestry, speaking a common language or languages, and following a religious tradition revolving around the worship of Ahura Mazda, the god of the Zoroastrian religion. And while it has been shown that the Proto-Indo-European root word for Aryan was used as a designation for nobility, as previously stated, this was not used as an ethnic identifier in any of the early Indo-European speaking cultures other than the Sintashta and Andronovo cultures and cultures in the lands which they would settle, which can be witnessed in accounts of Herodotus, inscriptions in modern-day Iran by Persian kings such as Darius and Shapur, and use in the Avesta of Arya as an ethnic name used in words and phrases such as Aryafi Dein Havo, Aryan lands, peoples, or Aryo Sayanem, land inhabited by Aryans. Now that begs the question, how did this proposed race, which included such a wide range of peoples from such different geographical areas and with such a range in physical appearances, come to be primarily associated with the peoples and physical appearances of Northwestern Europe? Well, in our modern times, it is generally understood that the Proto-Indo-European language originated from the Yamnaya culture based in the steppe lands of modern-day Ukraine and southwestern Russia. However, during the 1800s and early 1900s, there was debate regarding the hypothesized homeland of the Proto-Indo-European speakers. One of the less widely held theories proposed in the 1860s was that the Proto-Indo-European speakers originated in northwestern Europe. German nationalists such as Karl Penka and Gustav Kosina would accept this hypothesis, with Kosina identifying the Proto-Indo-Europeans with the corded ware culture of Northern Europe, placing the Proto-Indo-European homeland in Northern Germany, while Karl Penka placed the Proto-Indo-European homeland in Southern Scandinavia. This hypothesis would later be accepted by members of the Nazi party, and being that it was believed at the time that the Aryans were synonymous with the Proto-Indo-Europeans, they asserted that the original Aryans were from Northwestern Europe, and as they spread across Eurasia, carrying their language with them, they intermixed with the people they conquered. Therefore, they concluded that the people of Northwestern Europe were direct or near-direct descendants of the original Aryans, unlike the other Indo-European speaking peoples who were of mixed background. Now again, as we know today, the Proto-Indo-European speakers did not originate in Northwestern Europe, and while genetic evidence does show high percentages of ancestry in Northern Europeans, likely derived from the Yamnaya, 
The Yamnaya did not refer to themselves by the ethnic identifier of Aryan, as there is currently no evidence of an ethnic name for the Proto-Indo-Europeans, let alone the term Aryan, so therefore, the people of Northwestern Europe cannot reliably be said to be the descendants of the ancient people known as the Aryans, nor can their culture and or languages be said to have descended from them, with that designation going to the speakers of the Indo-Iranian languages in modern-day nations such as Iran, India, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Tajikistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, the Maldives, and Sri Lanka thus painting a very different picture of the people known as the Aryans from the one which became popular and notorious in the 20th century. The term Aryan is now generally avoided in the West due to its association with the atrocities committed by Nazi Germany, however it is still used in linguistics with regard to the Indian branch of the Indo-Iranian languages, known as the Indo-Aryan branch of languages, and is currently used as a common name in countries such as Iran, India, and Nepal, as well as nations influenced by those cultures. Hope you enjoyed. Talk to you next time. Thank you for watching. This has been another Book of Kings video. Don't forget to like, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon to receive a notification every time I release a new video. And if you enjoy Book of Kings content and would like to support the channel, feel free to donate to the Book of Kings Patreon account. Link is provided in the description.